Hello. Uh, Mr. President? Yes. This is Dick Nixon. Yes, Dick. I just want you to know that I got a report from Everett Dirksen with regard to your call. And uh, I uh, just went on to the press. And I uh, said that uh, on the press that uh, I had uh, given you my personal assurance that uh, I would do everything possible to cooperate both before the election elected after the election, and that if you felt, uh, the Secretary of State felt uh, that anything would be useful that I could do, that I would do it, that I felt Hannah, I felt Saigon should come to the, con to the conference table, uh, that I would, uh, if you felt it was necessary, go there or go to Paris, anything you wanted. I just wanted you to know that uh, I feel very, very strongly about this, and uh, any, uh, any uh, rumblings around about uh, somebody uh, trying to uh, sabotage the Saigon government's attitude, they certainly have no, absolutely no credibility as far as I'm concerned. That's, that's, I'm very happy to hear that, Dick, because that is okay. taking place. Now, here's here's the history of it. I didn't want to call you, but I wanted you, I, that is, uh, I wanted you to know what happened. Uh, sure. uh, the UPI ran a story quoting, I guess it was Spanx, said a highly placed aide to Nixon said today the South Vietnamese decision to boycott the Paris talks did not jibe with the assurances given the major presidential candidates by Johnson. Uh, then it says Nixon said the advisor felt that Saigon's refusal to attend the expanded negotiation could jeopardize the military and diplomatic situation in Vietnam and domestically reflect the credibility of the administration's action to halt the uh, bombing in North Vietnam. Now, I went back. I want to give you the dates of these things. Uh, this has been going on, as I told you before, since June on this three-point basis. Number one, that they take the GVN into the conference. And two and three, that they not shell the cities and that they, they, they not abuse the DMZ. We knew we could never get them to agree to it. You asked me one time, do they have to agree to all three? And I said, I don't want to put it that way, but they have to know that if they do it, we'll resume the bombing. Now, I don't know what led them to this, but in the early part of October, they came in and said, now, if we would let the GVN come in, would you need anything else? What else would you need? Well, of course, we came back with these other points. They ran off then to Hanoi. I thought it was because uh, they had heard some speeches made in this country that indicated that uh, 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 that was to their interest and that they just wouldn't take it up. Right. I told you all that, in effect, in the October the 15th talk, these three points. Right. Now, the other day, we, we, had, we had talked to Chu on October the 13th and stressed that we had to have these points, and he agreed. On October the 15th, we reviewed it with him again, and he bought a 36-hour period between the stopping the bombing and the conference. On October the 23rd, he agreed to a three-day delay. On October the 28th, we agreed to the communique that we would both make a joint announcement when and if uh, we could clear it with them, get them signed on. Then the traffic goes out that uh, Nixon will do better by you. Now, that goes to Chu. I don't, I, I didn't say, as I said to you the other day, I didn't say that you, that with your knowledge, I hope it wasn't. But, uh, uh, as a matter of fact, I'm not privy to the, what you were doing, of course. But, well, the whole point is this. I think one thing we have to understand here is that you know and I know that uh, within the, there's, there's a hawk dove complex out there, as there is here, uh, and that uh, everybody's been saying, well, now, after the election, what will happen? And, of course, there is some, some thought that Hanoi would rather deal now than deal later. Oh, yes. They, yeah. they think Nixon will be tougher, and yeah. I understand that, and I think yeah. that's one of the reasons you felt you had to go forward with the pause. But my point that I'm making is this, that, my God, I would never do anything to, to, to encourage Hanoi, I mean, Saigon, not to come to the table because basically 
that was what you got out of your bombing pause. And good God, we want them over to Paris. We've got to get them to Paris or you can't have a peace. Well, I think if you take that position, you're on very, very sound ground. And what I, said I think it's very much in the I, interest I said, of you. I said that the major thing that the president insisted upon and got was the right of set of high, of high, excuse me, Saigon to be at that conference table. I and, they and, must be at the conference table, and I believe they should be, and that's why I said that I just felt that I ought to emphasize it. I said that, uh, I said, uh, I know that, uh, that, uh, Nobody's going to know who's going to win this. But if I do, I said, I'm president-elect. I personally pledged to President Johnson I would do anything. And I want to amplify that by emphasizing it by saying that I will do if he and Secretary Rusk indicate that my presence in Paris or uh, Saigon and Israel, I want you to know I'll do that. I go out there and talk to you if it's necessary. Well, I think it, I, 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 or whatever you want. My judgment is now that from what I see and hear, uh, let me read you what I said to you the other day, though, because apparently I don't know whether whether uh, you remembered or not. While this was going on, talking of these moves on these three points, we had gone out and talked to all of our allied countries, yeah. and they tentatively agreed. Now, since that time, with our campaign going on here, we have had some minor problems develop. First, there have been some speeches that we ought to withdraw troops, or that we should stop the bombing without obtaining anything in return. Or some of our folks, even including some of the old China lobby, are yeah. going around and implying to some of the folks that they might get a better deal out of somebody that was not involved in this. Now that's made it difficult on me, and it slowed things down some. I know that none of you candidates are responsible for it because I'm looking at what you said to me when we talked last October 15th. Now that's what I said and I thought the thank remark was uh, uh, very much out of place saying that uh, I had left a wrong impression because I thought and I think now that you will come to the conference but I had a firm agreement with him two or three times on the joint communique and everything else until he got this word. Well, I and when I talked to you, I still thought that we could get him, and I think we can yet, but I did tell you we had problems. Now, that was the impression I had when the three of us talked, the impression I had when you talked to the three of us, that uh, you were confident he was going to come, uh, you know, that you was going to come. And, of course, that was what the background in Washington they reported indicated, too. And I just assumed he would come. But, uh, well, we knew we had problems, you Dick. You still think he's going to come? Well, we, 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 we don't see what else he can do. If we stay together, yeah. we just think that uh, no people are going to support an effort where a man will not talk to anybody. Yeah. Well, one thing I said, and I, I thought you'd be interested in this, I made this point, which I feel very strongly about, that uh, let's suppose that, that I should win. Now, all right, then you've got, you've got if Johnson and Nixon, and I pointed out that I have stood fairly close to you on this, on the, as I said in answer to Larry Spivak, I said, I disagree with the conduct of the war, but I agree that, and I use this term, I think President Johnson's got a bad rap on terms of the commitment. I said, we, we're there to try to stop aggression and start and, and avoid another war. And I, I went and I said, now, then I went on to say, I said, the critical period could be the 60 days before the inauguration. And at that point, if we can present a united front, uh, the uh, it seems to me that we might make the breakthrough that couldn't be made later, and I honestly believe that. Yes, I, 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 that. These people, I think you will agree, well, I think you've told me uh, earlier that these people over in uh, Hanoi, to a certain extent, hold on because they think we're divided in this country. Now, once we've had an election, and you have a Republican, if it's Nixon, and you have a Republican, and, and Johnson, a Democrat, it seems to me that's an awful strong, strong case. Yes. But I just want you to know, I'm not trying to interfere with your conduct of it. Uh, I mean, I'll, I'll only do what you and Russ want me to do, but I'll do anything. Because anything... Well, that's good, Dick. We've I... got to get this goddamn war off the plate. And I also want you to know this. I've, I've said this to our mutual friend, George, today. I was talking to him. You know, I'm going down to Florida after things. And I, I really feel this, that, uh, and I feel this very deeply, that uh, I think you've got the bad rap in this thing. I don't think... I, I, think, the, I think the war... Apparently now is about where it could be brought to an end, and if we can get it done now, uh, fine. That's 
that's what it ought to do. The quicker the better, and uh, the hell with the political credit. Believe me, that's the way I feel. Well, like. that's fine, Dick, and we'll we'll talk about it right after. I don't think they're going to do anything now. The important thing is for your people well, not to I'm tell not to tell the South Vietnamese. If they'll tell them just what you tell me, why it'll be the best for all concerned. I said publicly on Meet the Press today. I said, look, and that's the only thing I don't talk to anybody else. I said publicly, I said the South Vietnam ought to come to the conference table, and then if the president feels that I could be helpful in getting them to come, I'll go there. Yes, well, that's I fine. That. Now, you tell Brother Fink that I told all of you the other day that we did have problems with these folks, yeah. and just uh, what I said, because I didn't mislead you all. I told you that we had to... Uh, you didn't mislead me. I told, I told the president today, I said that I felt that uh, I got the impression that they were coming. We, we all want them to come and hope they'll come and really believe they'll come. I just don't think they can, but I... It's really a question of when they'll come. That's right. I said, now, this has made it difficult, and it slowed things down a bit. I don't... I know that none of you candidates are responsible for it because I'm looking at the transcript, and then I said the vice president said in a, when I asked for comments, thanks much. Mr. Nixon said, well, as you know, this is consistent with my position. I made it very clear I'll make no statements, undercut the negotiation. So we'll stay right on that and hope that this thing works out. And Mr. Wallace said, quote, Mr. President, that's my position all along. You stated it, and I agree with you that we shouldn't play politics so it might foul up the negotiations, unquote. And incidentally, Wallace has been very good at that. Yes, he has. Both of you. I gave you the three quotes. That, he has popped off, but Wallace has been good. Well, I I didn't want, uh, when they said Nixon, said the advisor, Nixon, comma, said the advisor, felt that Saigon's refusal to attend would jeopardize the diplomatic situation and reflect the credibility on the administration's action. That's his point. That's that his highly placed aide said the South Vietnamese decision to boycott did not jibe with the president's assurances. I, 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 I hit that right in the nose today. The hair capital of NBC asked me the question. I wish you could have seen the program, because yeah. most of them thought it was pretty good. Good, good, Dick. Well, you no, just... No, yes, good guys. You've got people, you, you've got people on your own staff over there that, that don't, you know, George Ball, some of those guys are saying some god-awful things. Well, George Ball's not on my staff. No, you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. But what I've got, I've got to, uh, I've got both sides. I know I'll look at one statement, the South Vietnamese look at the other. You just see it, your people don't tell the South Vietnamese that they're going to get any better deal out of the United States government than, than a conference. Yeah, and also, uh, we've got to make sure that Hanoi knows they're not going to get Yeah, that's that. exactly right, and I'm, I'm doing that. In fact, and the main thing that we want to have is a good, strong, personal understanding. I mean, uh, after all, I've, I trust you on this, and I've told everybody that, and that when we, and that once this thing is over, if there's nothing I would rather do if I win the election than to, to, uh, to do anything that you think we have to do. But well, Dick, you noticed, uh, you must... Uh, you must uh, uh, have noticed that uh, when we proposed the date, the date was not November the 2nd, as suggested, but November the 6th. Yeah. Before, yeah, I know. before any meeting occurred. Yeah. Incidentally, we... I Smathers, visited, under, Smathers understands that. I visited Austin for the first time. Well, yes. It's, and, uh, it's a beautiful city. It's, today. We, we spoke in that new auditorium there, that, the, the circular thing. And uh, I didn't get over to your library, though. And, uh, well, we haven't got it. Your library is we it? haven't got it built yet, but you have to. We we're just starting well, that's on. That's what you talked about about the because the, the, I thought the. Uh, we're, we, oh, you're building it. Later. We're building it now. I get it. I get yeah. it. But it is in Austin. Yeah. Yeah. I see. I see. Well, I'll be in touch with you after Tuesday, and uh, you you should see that your people that are talking to I these folks that. make clear your position. You understand, of course, there will be there's there's this. Business, you know, some of Humphrey's people have been gleeful, and they said the bombing bar is going to help them, and so forth, and our people say it hurts. Well, I'll tell you what I say. I say it doesn't help, doesn't affect the election one way or the other, because... Because I've asked all the candidates to please uh, support me, and the other day, all three of them said, you let it off, but all three of them said, we'll back you, Mr. President. Right. So I said it oughtn't affect the election one way, and I don't think it'll change one vote. Well, anyway, we'll have fun. Thank you, Dick. Bye. Thank you.